you've probably seen those movies, Terminator or The Matrix, you know, how the machines take over and kill us all. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've seen those movies too. They're quite enjoyable. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people that are a little bit nervous about um, AI, chat GPT. You know, gosh, I know how this ends. It's all over. Well, they are taking over many aspects of our life, including HR. A robot may have significant influence on whether or not you even get an interview for your next job. Um, but yeah, the Terminator is here to set us free. Uh, Tom O'Neill from cv.co.nz. Uh, Tom, what did, what did he say? You'll be back. Uh, and here you are. Yeah. Nice I'll to chat be with you. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, messing aside, but I had to get that introduction out of the way because, I mean, hey, AI is... It's a reality. It is coming. It will change the employment landscape. And it, it will also, well, it's already changing the way we get employed. But it's nothing to necessarily panic about. The Skynet isn't quite falling yet, to mix my metaphors a little bit. Um, but, but talk us through, where are things at in terms of, of AI and the, uh, the hiring process? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because normally, or you know, historically, it's always been, you know, in the old days, post in a CV and yep. if an employer's got 100 CVs, they go through manually. Then, of course, that changed to, you know, email us your CV. Oh, okay, cool. And then from there, um, it's now, uh, you know, email in your CV or um, do it via the online form, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through the, uh, let's say, Seek and uh, so on. And so at the back ends of those are things called ATS. Applicant tracking software. Yep. Now, I'm not going to panic everyone say everyone employ every employer does this because mm -hmm. they don't. I mean, if you've got, I mean, it's New Zealand. You know, we're not going to have ten thousand applicants for you know you know many jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but it is part of the new reality that we need to be aware of. That the first thing that judges you uh, is not necessarily a recruiter or an HR person. Okay. But they're not like checking our LinkedIn profile against our microchip or anything, anything <laughs> weird and, <laughs> and random like that. This yeah, is basically yeah, yeah. what looking for keywords, seeing if there's at least yeah. an overlap between the uh, the job description and the application. Well, imagine you're the HR person, right? You've got 120 applications come in. They've all come through this ATS software. Mm -hmm. They are now going to give each candidate a rating. Okay. So, you know, 92, 46, 73, 18, whatever it is. Now, you imagine you're the HR person. You're not going to start at 18 and work your way up. <laughs> you're going to start at 93 and work yeah. your way down. Mm -hmm. When you get five people, you feel that are look really good and, you know, look, look like they um, would be great candidates, you're going to stop. And then you're going to send out a, you know, you contact those people, obviously, and organise interviews. And then once that's confirmed, chances are you'll send out the sorry, not sorry letter. Um, or you'll get the robot to, the, to do that, that even better, better, right? Do yeah. That, well, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you will tap a button and that will happen. Um, and so in that context, it, it really, it's really important to get a whole bunch of things right in your CV. Mm. Um, because if they're not right, you'll end up, you could be the, literally the best candidate for the job. Yeah. But if you've got a 64% match because you haven't done some certain things, you'll end up um, being seen as an also brand. It is something to, you know, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, the things you need to put in your CV and your LinkedIn profile and, you know, have a nice photo and, and putting in uh, a good title and all of those sorts of things. But that doesn't really matter if the if it doesn't, you don't get past the first sieve of the um of the AI system. However, there is something that we can do to increase our odds, to increase our percentage, to uh, at least push us in the direction of that top five that are going to get an interview. Oh, look, 100%. So a range of things. I'll just quickly run through them, mate, if I may. Yep. First one's keywords. So really thinking about in the CV. Most people do the keywords in their cover letter. Mm -hmm. But an interesting statistic is most recruiters don't read cover letters, wow. according to one uh, um, one argument, uh, one study from America a number of years ago. Um, so you really need to make sure the CV can be read alone. Mm -hmm. standalone, as well as a quality cover letter, don't get me wrong. So what you do is you look at the keywords in the job description, job advertisement, yep. particularly when it says the ideal candidate will have the following skills. Mm -hmm. And just have a look there and then mirror that that, uh, that language Copy into paste. the Come cover on. letter. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, copy paste, play around with it a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want to plagiarise it, but yeah, at yeah. the same time, you want it to look good. Um, secondly, strangely enough, fonts. Okay. Now, um, yeah, now a lot Anybody of people. Anybody who 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 puts in Comic Sans, that's an automatic bottom of the oh, list, no, is it? Straight away, yeah. <laughs> Atheists will probably read it, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Sans, please don't use. Uh, uh, with fonts, you know, the, the standard ones, you know, Times New Roman, Calibri, all that yep. sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and you can really know when you go, let's say, on Word, you click on fonts and there's true, t- true type and then all the rest. Mm-hmm. Basically, stick with the true type font. It means that it's pretty standard and it's easy for the computer or the ATS software, because what it does, it just gets all the text, throws it together in a machine-readable file, then goes through it. Yeah. Now, therefore, if there's some font in there, let's say in the headings or just in general, that it can't make out, Okay. well, it's going to really run into some major issues there. If it can't read it, it's um, not going to read it, basically. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, the next one, formatting. So, again, you want to you know, make it look... Um, you know, you want it to be the tricky things. You want to make it look really nice for the HR person. You mm-hmm. know, really, really cool. The problem is that's quite different to how ATS reads it. Oh, so ATS. Um, so let's say you've got all columns everywhere and and all these sort of things. Let's say some graphics, big graphics all through the CV. Um, it can't make sense of it. And mm-hmm. so, for example, it'll read from sometimes left to right across the page because it just gets the software, pulls it. Text to text, pulls it out, dumps it into a file. So yeah. if you've got, let's say, some information in a block on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side of the page, completely different information like the software knowledge on the left career experience, mm-hmm. there's a high chance it may just read across the page. Okay. Therefore, it doesn't make sense. You know, so therefore, trying to make um, make it, um, you know, one column uh, is pretty, pretty, pretty important yeah uh, the problem is it doesn't look quite as pretty for the hr person and so it's like oh far out you know what do you do so end of the day uh, i would suggest one column because um, honestly if you don't get past that, the robot the hr uh person's never going to be impressed by it because they well, won't get that far right that's exactly yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly right they, it, yeah absolutely and the next one you want it to be in a, in a format that is easy to read so mm-hmm. for example microsoft word um, recruiters love uh, word um, they can open it up, and they, that's what they tend to use on the whole. Another version is a PDF, yep. um, but when you use a PDF, so you can write it, let's say, in Pages, which is Mac or mm-hmm. Word, yep. but then you save it as a PDF. But when you save it as a PDF, you need to make sure it can be read by the computer. Yep. Now, a way to do that is you open it up, and you get your mouse, and you drag down um, the, the, file, the text, mm-hmm. and it should highlight the text. Sometimes it takes a photo of the CV and it can't do the text. So yep. now yep. Um, the software is going to try and figure that out. So be careful there. Also be careful not using things like maybe Publisher, ideally not Pages. Now that will annoy some Mac people out there. Is there a bias between um, Microsoft and, and Apple? Is there some people that are going, well, I'm absolutely. not going to employ anybody that, that uses an iPad. They're off my list. Or is this just the robots we're talking about here? Uh, no, it's really more recruiters, mm-hmm. right? So you're a recruiter and, you know, chances are you've got Microsoft Office, right? Yeah. So you, you, you get a CV in pages. Mm-hmm. Well, now, uh, if A, I can't open it, and B, even if I can open it through some wizardry of the, the background, it's not going to have the nice format and look exactly how you wanted it to be. Yeah. And the problem is all the Mac people go, oh, well, I'm a, I've am got a Mac, so that's how it is. Well. Yeah. Sorry, mate. It's Although, not about you. as a as a uh, a Mac user myself, when you save down a page's file, it gives you the option to save it as a as a Word document, so you can write well, it see, in what write it in pages, save it in Word. Everyone's happy, right? Yeah. What I'd probably do is save it as a PDF, okay, not Word, because when it goes to Word, you know, again now it may not be exactly how you want it. Yes, Things true. will change. Yeah. So if you save it as a PDF, that's the way forward, and everyone can access it. Um, last couple of little things, avoid graphics on the whole. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people like to put um, little pie graphs showing their skill level and those sort of things. Mm-hmm. Again, look really cool to a recruiter. Look, the computer does not understand it. And then finally, headings, having really good, clear headings in the CV. Yep. So as the software goes through, it can make sense of the, the document as it sort of uh, figures itself out. 
Hey, very good wisdom and advice and some stuff which isn't necessarily intuitive for, to us non-robots uh, <laughs> as to the way in which we should do things. So, hey, thank you so much for your wisdom and advice. As always, more of that available at cv.co.nz. Uh, Tom, have a great week. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, God bless, mate. Always a pleasure and have a lovely rest of your week. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.